Welcome to my channel Daily Bulletin News. Abigail's encounter with Mark raises more questions, and spoiler reveals they stole Brady's car. At the cabin, Holly demands to know why she found Tate and Sophia half-naked together. Tate swears he shuts Sophia down. He only wants to be with her. Holly believes him. She could tell by the look on Sophia's face he rejected her. Plus, she totally trusts him. After some kissing, Tate brings up Holly's aunt Sarah. She wonders what kind of person hits someone with their car and just drives away. A horrible person with no conscience, Tate responds. While watching Victoria in her Salem Inn room, Fiona eyes the vodka bottle. She stashes it under the bed when Xander knocks. She lets in her son, who needed to see Victoria. Fiona asks how he's holding up. He'll be better when the police arrest the person who nearly killed his wife. Brady lets Jada into the townhouse, wondering why she wants to see his car. She explains it matches the description of the car that hit Sarah. Plus, they have a partial plate. She sternly asks to see it. Now, Brady says it was stolen. Kristen finds Chad looking at the photo of himself and Abigail in their old bedroom. She asks where is the woman who claims to be Abigail. Chad declares she is Abigail, who remembers Clyde stabbing her. Kristen asks if Chad's sure it's a real memory or if she could be a fraud. Chad declares there was a DNA test and it was a match. It's Abby. Kristen apologizes. She's just trying to protect him. He guardedly thanks her. When Kristen leaves, Chad pensively looks at the photo again. Abigail meets Dr. Mark Green in the park. They hug. Stressed, she tells him the mansion is like a mausoleum with so many Demira eyes on her. Plus, Chad was looking at her with puppy dog eyes, so she threw him a bone and told him she remembered the night of Abigail's murder. Mark thinks she did the right thing. Abigail doesn't think she had a choice. But now, she'll have to keep remembering things if they want everyone to believe she's Abigail Demera. She's grateful he was able to change the DNA test and says they make a good team. The teens eat pastries from sweet bits at the cabin. Holly tells Tate that Mark saw Aaron's picture on Instagram, labeled as Tate Black. She doesn't think he's suspicious, though. Relieved, Tate notes Mark raised Aaron and Felicity after their parents died. Talk about a great guy, right? Holly says. At the Salem Inn, Xander tells his mother the police have a partial license plate. With any luck, they'll find the person who hit Sarah. When Xander worries she'll never be able to walk again, Fiona asks if that will change how he feels about her. Xander loves Sarah more than he ever thought he could love anyone. Nothing's going to change that. However, he worries he won't be the man she needs should she have to adapt to a new way of life. Fiona knows he's strong enough to handle it. She can help too. After all she's done, she needs to help. He asks what means. She laments not being there for him in the past, but she's going to make up for it. She'll make up for it all. At the townhouse, Brady lies to Jada that his car was stolen the morning of the 14th, the day of Sarah's accident. He remembers because it caused him to miss a meeting at Basic Black. However, he didn't report it because he's been slammed at work covering for Xander. Data thinks it's possible the person who stole his car is the same one who hit Sarah. She tells him to file a report at the station. In the park, Mark tells Abigail they need to discuss the next steps of their plan. But before they can, Chad finds them. Abigail lies that she was just asking this nice man for directions. After Mark leaves, Chad suggests talking about the night Abigail was stabbed but helps spark more memories. Like, what color robe was she wearing? Marlena finds Jada taking photos of an empty parking space in the townhouse garage. Jada explains Brady reported his car stolen and asks when Marlena last saw it. She recalls seeing Brady's car in her parking space the night of the 14th, but she didn't see Brady. Brady anxiously paces in the townhouse as Kristen comes by. She explains she took his car after seeing the damage to his front bumper. Since he was a mess the last time she saw him, she deduced he was Sarah's hit-and-run driver. She got rid of the evidence because it would kill Rachel to see him in prison. Brady tells her Jada has a partial plate. Kristen thinks that without the car, Jada has nothing. Kristen urges Brady to stay calm and do what he'd normally do. Brady wonders what one normally does when they run down a member of their family. She suggests he visit Sarah at the hospital and offer compassion. Brady stresses over being responsible for her paralysis. Kristen says whatever Theresa did to him isn't worth throwing his life away. He needs to get sober and pull his life together. She'll help him for their daughter.